Hey y'all, I Rick Sky here. Now a question I get, and this is obviously in regards to Mac users. Now I use the iMac with Retina 5K display that I'm on right now. But people ask, you know, how do you store so many videos? And obviously you know that I've gone full 4K now. And when you're dealing with 4K video, it's inevitably a lot larger than, than HD video. So what I'm going to do within this video is step you through how I organize my content and this is applicable to both videos, which I use uh, Final Cut Pro 10, and photos, still photos, which I use the Mac OS 10 Photos app. So what we what we're looking at here, if you go to your uh, about your computer and you go to storage, you'll see the internal hard drive, which is 200. And, well, it says 249, but it's a 256 gig flash. Now I got my iMac with Retina with flash. And I went with the smallest option, which was 256, simply because when I'm running the applications, that's going to give me the best performance. Because if you go with traditional hard drive, it's going to slow it down because of the, uh, you know, the the mechanical hard drive that's inside versus flash. Same scenario with Fusion, which is kind of a uh, a combination of flash and traditional style hard drive, but it's still not as fast. Is flash only so for that reason you can see I went with the the humbly equipped 256 gig flash storage option for my iMac with retina but he, here you can see I've got two massive beasts. I've got a 22 terabyte uh, primary external enclosure this is Thunderbolt 2 uh, check the link within this video's description you can find exactly what I'm using so the one that says StarTech is my 22 terabyte uh, Thunderbolt enclosure. Now I can add more drives to it as the need arises. So that's the beauty of this. I'm using concatenated disk set. So it basically makes multiple physical drives appear as if they're one drive to the OS. So that's what the StarTech is. And then I've got the backup 8 drive. It's the same type setup except what I'm using it for is my time machine backup. So should any of the hard drives in my uh, in my hard drive array, my concatenated disk set fail, I'm going to have a time machine backup, which is just good for peace of mind, especially when you're uh, when you're full time YouTube like I am, and you know all of those videos are of extreme value. So what we're going to do now, we're going to we're going to chisel this down. You can see I've got 75.14 gigs out of 249 gigs free. So we're going to go to Go up at the top menu here. You're going to go to Go and we're going to go home. Now once we're home, what we can see here are a series of subfolders. Now in this scenario, we're going to move the photos, the still photos. So what I'm going to do is go into this folder here called pictures. And then once you're in pictures, you'll see something that says photos library. Now this is several uh, gigs in size. So this is stored on my internal flash drive, and I don't want that. I want to move it to my external. So what we're going to do now is keep this open. We're going to go to Go again, and I'm going to go to Home. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I just messed up. So let's go back to Pictures. Now we're going to do Finder, File, New Finder Window, because we want to have two Finder Windows. And what we're going to do here is go to StarTech. StarTech is, as I'd mentioned earlier, it's my external drive. So I've got uh, I've got Photos app closed. If you haven't closed your Photos app, you want you want to do that first. But just go to your external hard drive. This doesn't have to be an external hard drive array that's extremely massive like mine is. It could simply be a uh, you know just a external USB three. You know, two or four terabyte external hard drive, it doesn't matter. So all we're gonna do is drag this thing right here. It says photos library from pictures. We're gonna drag it over to our external drive, in my case the StarTech. So now you can see there it's copying over. And we've got a little status here. So that's that's thirty three gigs of still photos. So I mean when you're when you're dealing with a flash based Mac that in my case is 256 gig. Now you, you may even have a smaller flash base Mac. You may have gone with a 128 gig 
And actually, I did go with the 128 gig for my for my MacBook Pro 13 inch with Retina, and which is plenty big enough for me as well. But if you're depending upon that internal flash storage for storage, in my opinion, you're you're going at it the wrong way. You need to look at flash for speed of all of your applications. You need to look at external solutions for your storage. So once this copies over, which it says it's got three minutes remaining, once it copies over, then we can simply double click it on the external drive and it'll then open our Photos app, but it'll open the Photos app with all of the information being stored on the external hard drive versus our internal storage which obviously we want to conserve as much of that space as we can because it's not that big. While this is copying I'm going to show you how you would do the same with uh, with Final Cut Pro 10 or if you use iMovie if you haven't uh, if you haven't upgraded to Final Cut Pro 10 or you don't have the need to I'm going to show you how to do the same with iMovie because if you're looking at my my external drive right here the StarTech You'll see I've got a series, not only do I have a series of photos libraries, but I also have a series of Final Cut Pro libraries. Those are indicated by the little purple stars. So what I do, I just make multiple. I don't like to get a library, to, I don't want to let a library become too large. And typically when I'm in a certain filming location, one of the first things I'll do for that filming location, for example, Bermuda. When I was in Bermuda, I created a photos library and actually that's an iPhoto <laughs> because that was before photos was out uh, so I've actually got both for it but I've got my photos library for still photos and then my uh, and then my video library for Final Cut Pro 10 which are videos so if you wanted to do the same thing with your videos if you wanted to move your videos either from Final Cut Pro 10 or iMovie over to your external hard drive what you would do is just open a new finder window once your new finder window is open, go to your, um, say, go home. And then once you're in home, whereas previously we selected pictures for the still photos, but we're going to go to movies. And then once you're in movies, you'll see here, I've actually got one library and it has nothing in it. It was just the, uh, the default one that was created, but that's my that's my uh, Final Cut Pro 10 library which it's it's empty but if this was on your computer this would probably be the one that you would uh, that you would be using for Final Cut Pro 10 so what you would want to do obviously make sure Final Cut Pro 10 is closed and then you would simply drag this over to your external hard drive once it's dragged over to your external hard drive um, double click it it'll launch Final Cut Pro 10 except then it'll be storing all of the information on your on your uh, external hard drive versus your internal. And the same would be applicable if you were an iMovie user. You should see an iMovie library in here, which I don't use iMovie. I use Final Cut Pro 10, but if you used iMovie, it would just be the same procedure. Make sure iMovie's closed. Drag your iMovie library over to your external hard drive. Double click your iMovie library on your external hard drive to launch iMovie, and then it would be utilizing the storage space on your external hard drive for your uh, uh, for your iMovie videos and, and related content. So what we got now, we've got, uh, we've, we've dragged over the, uh, the photos library and you can see it hasn't updated the, the available space yet because obviously now the library resides in both locations. What I would strongly encourage you to do and I'm not going to open it up in this video because I've got a ton of stuff and it's going to take a while to open. I would strongly recommend you open this from your external hard drive. Make sure everything is there. You know, you're not missing any photos. And then once you're confident that everything is there, what I would then do is delete the library from your, uh, from your internal hard drive. Because so you can see when I delete the library from my internal hard drive, I mean that's gonna that's gonna free up a tremendous amount of space and in my case it was because I shoot with ultra high quality cameras in my case I think it was around 33 gigs which is a I mean when you're looking at potentially only having a, a flash based Mac with 128 gigs of storage 33 out of that is quite significant especially if you use a lot of different applications 
Now, really, all that I use the internal storage for, I use it for Final Cut Pro 10, uh, the Photos app, and obviously uh, email. And, you know, of course, it's housing the operating system as well, Mac OS 10. So there's, there's quite a bit of that space consumed. But I, in a perfect world, what I try to do, I try to keep around 100 gigs available because what I like to do when I'm editing, uh, uh, when I'm exporting videos that I've created in Final Cut Pro 10, I like to simply export them from compressor to my desktop. And by having this internal flash storage available, I can export them to my desktop as just temporary landing page or landing place rather. And then I can simply upload them from my desktop to YouTube. Once they've been uploaded to YouTube, I can, de I can delete the, uh, the exported projects or the exported video files rather from my desktop and just retain the original video content and project within the Final Cut Pro 10 library. And I know this may have been a lot of information to digest, uh, but this is how I do it and it's, it's really, really simple. And just as a quick recap, in case you might want it, again, I've got three drives in my computer. I've got my internal, which is 120, uh, 256 gigs, which is flash. I've got my 22 terabyte external concatenated disk set, multiple hard drives, appears to be one hard drive to the OS that's 22 terabytes in size. That's where I house all my videos and photos. And then my secondary external hard drive away, array rather, also a concatenated disk set, same type deal, multiple hard drives, appears to be 22 terabytes. That's my time machine backup. So I've got internal storage that's used for applications and, and temporary storage of exported videos that I'm, that I'm going to upload to YouTube. And I could also export those from my external if I wanted to. I just do it to the desktop because they're easy to see. Uh, then I've got my primary storage device, 22 terabytes. And then I've got my time machine backup. Should any of this fail, I've got a complete backup of everything. So thanks again for watching. Be sure to uh, Subscribe if you haven't already. It's youtube.com forward slash irixguy. And check out, uh, check out my Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial playlist. I've got a lot of how-to videos in there. And if there's any questions that you have that, that you would like me to try to address in an upcoming video, simply drop me a message by way of my Facebook fan page, facebook.com forward slash irixguy, or send me an email by way of my website irixguy.com. It's my pleasure to try to help. I've been uh, I've been doing this for several years, and I've I've tried to identify the most not only the most efficient workflow, but also the workflow where I can get the maximum amount of storage for the minimal amount of money, and I still have that really rock solid performance speed for my applications uh, since I'm using a flash based Mac instead of trying to just depend upon internal storage. Because if you're doing 4K video even if you get the largest internal hard drive option for your iMac, you're more than likely going to run out of that space before you know it. So since you're going to run out of that space anyway, why not just go with a flash-based Mac for the, for the best performance and store everything externally like I do? Thanks for watching, and y'all have a good day.